Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and I want to show you guys something that I'm really excited about which is, now it's unassembled right now, but a bead tray for if you're into wire wrapping or bead stringing or bead embroidery. This is just a little magnetically closed box that you can store your projects in. And I also think it makes just a fantastic little storage box for all sorts of stuff. Now this is the smallest size that we offer, which is, it has a total of a quarter of an inch in depth of storage space. So it could store any beads up to that size and thickness. But I don't know about y'all, but I really like um, some bigger beads and stuff, especially whenever I'm wire wrapping. So if you get one of the larger kits, which you can select that modifier whenever you're at our website, we can go as, as deep as you like. Like I think the biggest we have, um, that we're offering is like two inches deep. Um, and that's a fantastic box for like keeping crystals or jewelry or even essential oils and different things like that in. So, um, yeah, be sure to check that out on our website. But I just wanted to show you guys how to assemble it because we also sell, we sell the file so that if you have a laser cutter or a Cricut or you want to make your own entirely like out of polymer clay or something, like we have that file available for you all. Um, we also have the kit, which is the unassembled pieces, and then we will also be selling the assembled boxes. So, um, and possibly, if we're able to get any made that I'm not too selfish and keep for myself, um, we may have some that are finished and painted and stuff as well. So we're going to begin by, in your kit, you will have, depending on, uh, you know, the size that you've purchased, you'll have all of yours will actually because this one's the prototype so you can kind of see here i extended a little overcut on this side that will not be there on yours and all of your pieces will have this shape with that cut out there but you will also have a little piece that you can either choose to leave in or you can use that space to glue in a magnet which your kit will come with four of these little one centimeter rare earth magnets that you can place in that in that little spot now if we were doing a, a couple layers deep like how we are here I would go ahead and leave that little wooden piece in I would actually glue it in whenever we do that layer and that way it'll lift the magnet up uh, to where we want it to be. And then here on the lid, I'm, I'm hoping to have a whole line of these boxes in different designs and shapes with, um, with the different like patterns and stuff on them. Um, but this was something that I actually drew up in Procreate. Um, I'm starting to dabble in digital art a little bit and I really, really love it. And so I was very, very pleased to have been able to design that. After designing this in Procreate, um, I like the original design. I then went into Inkscape and drew in the vector lines for the cuts and then we produced this on our laser using a 1 8 inch plywood. Um, and I will be doing a version of this box. Today I was just going to kind of go through and color this in a little bit, but I am doing a version of this box where I actually used this as a base to sculpt on top of. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to subscribe as well as to sign up for our free newsletter at backtoearthcreations.com where um, we will be sending out uh, notifications every time we have new emails and stuff like that. So I'm going to be coming through just with, let's see, what glue am I going to be using today? We have some, right here we just have some regular old PVA glue. We could also use wood glue. Now this is something that if you're going to be staining this with a stain, um, as opposed to just like painting it or something, um, you'll, you'll want to be very tidy with your glue application. I am not a tidy person when it comes to applying glue and stuff, so um, I typically 
stick to either leaving mine bare or I just paint it. So to do this today, I'm just going to come through and use a little index card as a palette and did my glue dry on me? There it goes. Just globbing out a bit of wood glue. And I'm just going to be using a flat bristled brush. And we're going to come through, and on this one, I'm the base piece. It, it, keep in mind if this were yours, you would be gluing in that little spot. But this one, since this was with a prototype, um, I went ahead and left that piece in there. And I'm just going to come through and do a pretty, a thorough but not overly generous. Because like right there, I don't want glue getting into all those crevices and everything. I don't want it oozing out to the front. Now you will want either some books that you can stack on top of this to clamp it or some clothespins or I really like using binder clips personally. Um, but you'll just want something that you can kind of clamp this down together because this wood being a thin plywood can warp whenever you get it wet, um, either with paint or with um, glue. So just to make sure that everything has a nice adhesion whenever we're gluing it all together. And I'm just having fun slathering on some paint. <laughs> or not paint, but uh, painting it with glue rather. And I do want to make a really nice connection here because whenever we have our beads in this, I don't want any little gaps or anything. I mean, I don't think I'll be using any beads that small, but if you're going to do something, you may as well make it quality. Right? <laughs> you could use, instead of a paintbrush, a little applicator bottle. But, or toothpick. I've used toothpicks before. And I'm doing this in real time because I want to give you guys a very real idea of how long this actually takes. Um, you know, sometimes we have to be discerning about how we budget our time, and uh, I've often been misled by, like, DIY craft videos that are very heavily edited, cleverly edited, too, mind you. They're very entertaining, but I'll be like, oh yeah, I can do that in 30 minutes, three hours later. Like, it is no joke. So, and I really enjoy getting to hang out with y'all, and you never know what might come up when we're just slathering on some glue. If anybody is having any questions and stuff, please leave them down in the comments. Or if you're watching this during the premiere, hey everybody watching this in the premiere, I hope you guys are having a great day. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be able to answer any kind of questions that you might have or hear what any ideas you've got knocking about. So just getting that paint on there. Yeah, not paint, glue. <laughs> We've already had this discussion. And if you've got any spots that it started to dry already, just start. Put a little bit more on there. A little more blood. <laughs> Sorry, there's a scene from Robin Hood Men in Tights where the lady's making, um, Latrine is making an omelet for King John. And uh, anytime I'm like, a mm, little bit more. I always think of her making that omelet, and it has enriched my life in countless ways. Thank you, Mel Brooks. So just tapping that through, I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. I got a shop towel over here, there we go. Um, and now we get to do the fun part of lining this up and making sure everything stays put. Now, I know I said I like binder clips, but I got a whole mess of binder clips and clothespins most immediately on hand. And it can help if you have a flat surface. Like I really like this glass tile that I work on because it is 
perfectly flat and not warped at all. Um, so just line up your edge against. And if you don't like these dark edges, I personally love them, but that's my own preference. Um, if you want to leave the wood bare but don't want the dark edges, you can sand them off. I just personally think it, think it gives it such a nice effect. So I'm going to come in with the binder clip here on the tip. Boop. And then I need three more clips. Let's see what we can muster up couple of binder clips. There we go. And then we could set something heavy in the center. I am going to use a thing of paint. No, I'm not. I'm just going to set it off here to the side and use this stack of epoxy sculpt. There we go. And so now for the next layers, what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and do the lid for this one because I'm going to do the exact same thing but whenever we glue the magnets in we want to make sure that the magnets will actually stick to each other like we don't want the charge to be opposite to where they're like doing that thing e um so just make double triple certain um that your magnets are facing the way that you want and whenever we glue them in let me get this painted up and then I will show you guys the next step. Okay, so we have the glue applied and I'm going to come in here and bring this piece together. Again, using my surface to line everything up. And now before I go through and adding the clamps and everything, I want to put in some glue here that will keep our magnets in. Please pardon my, my dog's barking. My dog's darkin'. <laughs> and I am just really putting in a big old glob of glue because I'm actually going to be encasing the magnets. And just a little bit of glue. Now they'll still hold together just fine, but I just want to make sure that they don't rip each other out. So there's that, and I'm just gonna tap it in. And it fits quite snug, but you can wiggle it down and get that glue to squeeze out from underneath it. And then I just use the end of my paintbrush to completely encapsulate that in the wood glue. You could also use, I wouldn't use a UV resin just because you can't really, you know, get the light in underneath it. But you could use uh, like a two-part epoxy to really lock that in there. And I'm sure there's better ways of going about this too. This is just my little jank way. I'm just going to put a little bit more glue over on this side. We had some actually squeeze out the end, like there on the inside, so. Rinsing my brush out. I really like that brush, so I don't want to give the glue an opportunity. But now with a clean brush, I'm going to come in and tidy up any little overflow areas, just blending it around because I don't want like any little buggery spots, just gooping it up. There we go. Very cool. And now from here, we will clamp it again. So it really is helpful to have just a ton of these clamps. And if you have any like big leaky spots, and just wipe off the excess. Wood glue is always really nice to work with, I think. I'm just clamping. Could also, when I run out of my ideal clamps, I will start coming through with just whatever I have. 
to make sure everything is taken care of. So I'm going to keep clamping this up and then I will meet you back here for applying our next layers. So I've added on another layer and I'm coming through and clamping these back together. Now we could have just gone ahead and stacked all the layers together first. Um, like just glue, add a layer, glue, add a layer, glue, add a layer, and then gone ahead and clamped. But I don't mind doing it just a little bit, little stage at a time to make sure everything's nice and lined up. So we could make this go by a little bit faster, but I'm really enjoying the process too. So I just come in through now clamping all of this. I do like to try to focus this up on these cross beams that we have going on just so that we can actually get everything all clamped together. There we are. And now I'm just going to set this in the middle and kind of press down. There may be very minute variation between the layers but we do our best so this is kind of just where we're at my squeaky chair and now from here if this is the layer that I'd want the magnets in I'd go ahead and glue in the magnets but it is not this is where I want my little glue bit or my little wood bits to be glued in which if you bought one of these kits from our website backtoearthcreations.com um, your little circles like that would be um, held in place in each of the layers with a bit of masking tape. So mine, however, I lost one of the bits and was rummaging and found these other ones. So this one's actually going to be a little too small. But that's okay. We can still make it work. But on yours, it'll be better quality than that, I promise. There we go, just filling all that in, because we just need a spacer to bring the next layer where we will have the magnet lifted up. We just didn't want an empty spot for everything to collapse through. So it takes the same amount of time per layer, um, but I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me uh, watch glue dry. So I'm going to go ahead and paint on another coat of... I know we just clamped it on, but it holds it in place. <laughs> I never once claimed to be an efficient crafter. But um, on these ones, this last layer and this next one that I'm doing, I actually painted it on to this piece as opposed to this one, just because it was nice to be able to have something to hold on to like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and meet you guys back here. So I lied. I'm actually going to keep painting with you guys. <laughs> I don't mean to lie so much, but uh, I had an idea while I was sitting here painting, and before you apply your last piece, or just whenever you start your project, or whenever you think is good, these would be excellent stencils for putting on to like maybe a piece of felt, or a piece of velvet, or something like that, that you could then cut out perfectly sized little bits to make, to flock this, um, so that your beads might be a little bit easier um, to hook onto a needle if you're using very small seed beads. Um, just, just an idea. That might actually be kind of cool, I think, to have a nice little bit of uh, velvet or something in there to keep my beads from rolling away from me whenever I'm chasing them down with a with a beading needle or with a bit of wire or something of the sort. Now also, uh, at the time of recording, we have a holiday season coming up, but I imagine we'll have these up on our website year round, but we're debuting them for the holiday season this year. We will be having these styles of um, bead, bead tray boxes 
um, but sold kind of like a box of chocolates where there's something in each segment, but it's a box of cabs. So I think that that would be just, I mean, if somebody wanted to get me a present, a beautiful box full of crafting supplies um, or materials would be amazing. <laughs> so I thought it might be cool for some of y'all if you have somebody crafty in the family or wanted to treat yourself um, that we could have boxes of cabs that not only is it full of cabs, but you also have a fully functional bead tray for carrying your projects around with you. Now, if you have alignment issues with your layers, you can pre-align them and like just flipping them over. Uh, one, one way might line up slightly better than the other. I'm going to try to fine tune it to where that's no longer an issue, but I am learning. Oh, and the dog hair is always free. <laughs> We never charge extra for dog hair. It's a, uh, it's complimentary. It's on us, literally. It's on us. <laughs> so just coming through, you can use your finger or a paintbrush or whatever you like to smooth out any excess glue overflow. I just don't want any little bumps and nubblies. And we can just sand down the outer edge after it's all said and done but I do want to make sure it's nice and tidy here on the inside. Though also, if you don't wipe all of the goopies off, you can just come through with like a craft blade later and just scrape it up. It'll be fine. Okay, so now I want to make sure... I'm just testing over here. Off, off. Oh no, it's stuck to it in the glue. Oh gosh. Oh Vaughn, what have we done? Well, that's the right side. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, well, it's all covered in glue now. Give me a sec. <laughs> but it just, like, splot. Just... Oh, goodness. And I don't know how to get that back out. Or maybe I'll have to grab a bigger magnet. <laughs> Gets the bigger magnet stuff. Oh, no. Oops. Oh, man, that's really... It's really stuck in there. <laughs> well, I was going to keep this one for me anyways, so maybe, you know, it might actually work better with, like, they might, like, just be interlocking. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But is that still the right side? No. Okay, that is the... All right. <laughs> so... <sighs> I can't even pretend like I meant to do that because I did not mean to do that. Okay, so I'm globbing in our glue, double checking one more time that that's going to be the correct side, and it is. So I'm just going to take that and nestle it in to our little spot for it. Now, also, if you wanted to raise your magnet up just a little bit more, you could hole punch out some paper or use, like, some thick cardstock and just cut some up. You just need something that would raise the magnet up to the surface. So, though, really, if you're using a two-part epoxy as opposed to a glue like this, because this wood glue will kind of, like, shrink down just a little bit as it dries, um... That you can I lost my train of thought I've got so much glue everywhere <laughs> but yeah over here on the side you can now see and I may actually include a couple of extra magnets for y'all because like that pokes out just enough that that may actually be a very good thing so I'm going to wipe off the excess glue from on this side there we go and now I'm going to clamp this back together and I'm going to let these set up and dry all of the way. And this is why I do prefer binder clips is because whereas the clothespin reaches its like limit, the binder clips are just perfect for this. 
yeah I'm just gonna get it all clamped up and then let it dry and then meet you guys back here for some nice fun with decorating Alrighty, y'all. So it is moment of truth time. We're just about completely dry. It's probably going to take a little bit while longer for this magnet down here to get completely, completely dry. But let's test and see. Oh, well, <laughs> it lines up. Okay. So this being the prototype piece, I do think in the future, so in your kit, there will actually be magnets on the corners as well because I really wanted this to be locked tight to where you really could put your seed beads in here and quite potentially put this in your purse. You know, you might have to be kind of careful or maybe put some rubber bands around it, um, but well, this right here is cool and I think would work for like uh, cabs or something. I actually really like how that just slides right when you push on it. Um, but yeah, I think the addition of some magnets into the corners would be perfect because then we really would be just locked and ready to go. Um, but yeah, that's so cool, you all. <laughs> little bean tray so you could totally because I think I'd like to make some of these for in the holiday season I think I was telling y'all about that where now these are just some polymer clay, polymer clay and resin cabs I've been working on but we could make this just a little deeper and fit quartz crystals in here and all sorts of stuff like is that not just the neatest very cool. So now from here, I am going to zoom in a little bit and I think like chalk pastels work really well for adding in a nice little tint of color, but I'd really like to do some, uh, yeah, let me rummage. So yeah, I have some, some colors here and I really like Prismacolors on wood. I'm just going to come through and shade in. You could paint with acrylic paints. You could do all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to try to do some artful, artsy fartsy uh, time lapse maybe. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But I will meet you all back here as I go through. Or actually, I'll just let you guys know every time I have a new color. This is Celadon Green Prismacolor. Uh, PC, what is that? 1020. Can't tell if that's a 1 or a T. Yeah, I guess it's a 1. But I'm just going to come through and color the color in the bulk of the wings with this. So now I am coming through with a parrot green, and that is number 1006, and I'm coming in pretty heavy at the base of the wing and along the vein, but I'm going to leave it open there towards the tip of that area, and I just want to gradiate it in, into that lighter green, so giving just a little bit of rendering here make it look and it's okay if you get out of the line just a little bit because I have decided that I'm going to be going through with some paint and touching things up because I think it'd be super cool to maybe make some different elements of this glow in the dark um as well as I don't know maybe fluoresce like we'll see we'll see what the future holds but I'm just going to continue adding in these little elements not focusing on being super realistic, but just getting some color down and making sure that I like it. So I'm now going to come through and use my dark green that doesn't have a number on it um, to just really add in another layer of depth in and around the veins. So let's do that and see how it comes out.
So this is how it looks with the dark green on the veining. And next I'm coming through with Pale Sage, that's number 1089 with the Prismacolor pencils. And let's start down here, I think. Yeah. I am just going to start coloring in the body and this part up here as well as the high points on our wings. So let's go ahead and do that and see how it comes out. So the way that I got this effect is by really really pressing and blending with this pale sage, trying to fill up the entire, I know if this were paper it'd be considered the tooth of the paper, but I guess just really matting it down into the grain of the wood. So now the next color that I am going to be working with, I think, is going to be this one here, which is peacock green. And I'm just going to come through and add little touches to darken down, not pressing the way that I was with the pale sage, but just adding just a little touch of darkness, a little bit of depth. And since this is a bluer color, it's going to look a little deeper and farther away, so it'll add a little bit more depth. So I'm going to keep doing that. And then I think I'm going to come in with this, what is this? Um, gray green light and add some more highlights to the wings. So it's very, very subtle, I think, but a lot of art, I think, is achieved by just adding in layers of subtlety. But I'm just coming in, focusing on where the light would be hitting the wings. Just blending here like this. Really focusing up by, I'm going to be putting in some like white right here on these guys. And I also want to add some of this in along here on the top and outer edges of the spoon and of the wing itself. as well as adding some highlights here on the torso or the abdomen or the I don't know, thorax I need to learn these terms <laughs> but there we go I'm really liking how it's coming along so now I want to come through and only add white to the wings where it's very like strategic. So down here on those guys, maybe just a tiny little bit at the, just what would have been like the highest or the thinnest or points of the wings. And this whole time I'm adding in very light at first and then just adding it in. Okay, let's see how this looks with putting some light into, let's say, this moon. I like it. I'm also going to do a little bit of a high point there. A little bit more of a high point here on the body. Just adding it in there on the top edge of the wing and the moon. There we go. And now I'd like to just add in some really tight little... I'm trying to be very careful to only get it on that section of each of the wings.
being very careful to not just drag pigment when I, like I try to avoid rubbing my fingers over things if I can help it. Okay, and then the whites of the eyes, I'm going to do in white as well. Then we're going to come down and let's go ahead and do these guys. And I'm going to continue much in this manner all the way around. So this is how this is looking now. And I'm actually coming to come through with Mulberry, that's number 995. And I want to put this mulberry tone in as an underlayer to where I will be painting with um, antique copper acrylic paint a little later. So just very carefully. Fill in the eye as well. And this is where I'm going to really fill it in on the wings. Because this is where I'd like that, uh, really nice metallic copper shine to show through. And so again, being very extra careful now to make sure that I do not smear any of the bloom. Like as we, th there'll be like a little bit of a waxy buildup as we really get this, you know, into the grain of the wood. And that, that bloom of that waxy buildup can smear pigment elsewhere on the project. So really want to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I'm just going to continue through all the way around. And I'll meet you guys back here when I'm done with this step. Alrighty, so I am, oh no, coming through trying to not make just a royal mess out of things, but this is like the bloomiest dang pencil I've ever used, and trying to just kind of, there we go, lift that pigment out of there, and I am woo, going through and coloring in the border. I really like the natural wood toned background on this, so... I think the beauty of nature, even though this is a plywood, it's still, this is a really beautiful, I just love wood grain and that kind of texture and I feel no need to cover that up. And I like the very subtle difference with the very pale, faint engraving that we had done. So I'm going to leave that as is. That poor mulberry pencil has seen better days. And... Now we have our antique copper, and I'm going to be very careful, it's nice and slow and patient with my application of this. And I'm going to do a bit, let it dry, do a bit, let it dry, do a bit, let it dry, kind of, let's see if we can... Just coming in very lightly, and this is why I'm very glad to have done the mulberry in pencil first. Because I'm hoping that that will shine through. And I'm just putting on the antique copper for the effect of that metallic. But if I miss a spot, or it's a little bit less than the most perfect coverage in the world, it's going to be okay, because that colored pencil is under there and has our back. So, just coming through. 
being right-handed, I'm starting at the most, like, left and top part of the piece, and then working my way down and to the right to try to avoid dragging my hand through everything. <laughs> and so from here, just really almost touching the single hair of the tip of my paintbrush. Just trying to give it that touch of metallic. Feel free to clean your brush frequently. I'm very bad about that. But if you get a buildup of paint there on the tip, like a little farther up from the tip, it can betray you. And I'm going to leave the eye on this lower, just purple. I'm just going to leave it there. If, nah, I don't know. Let's do a little, just a little copper edge. So I'd hoped to do some glow in the dark or different things like that, but I'm pretty happy to leave this just as it is. Because I'm going to be doing a more complex version. Sorry, I just realized that was out of frame. Where I'll actually be sculpting this out of polymer clay and doing the wings with like a Skinner blend and using actual metallic clays and stuff to get the metallic effects. Though I, I don't know, we may do painted on details for that too. Um, so from there, that is on the one. Like, that will be the project that has the glow in the dark and all of the stuff like that. I'm pretty happy just letting this piece be what it is. There we go. And I'm going to continue doing this um, around the rest of the wing and then around the entire border. And I'll meet you guys back here when that is dry for the next step. So now this is how it's looking my paint's dry. I'm really, really pleased with how that's come out. And let's see if we can't zoom back in because I'd like to get with a very sharp tip and I'm going to be trying to maintain that. All the lines that were burnt in, like the engraved lines, I want to go through and trace or darken or fill in or just however I can. I'd really like to put the emphasis, the emphasis, on those lines. I think it's going to make everything a lot crispier. Now again, I have to be very careful to make sure that I don't smear any bloom from this black Prismacolor. And that's just 935, just black. They have a really nice heavily pigmented black, nice and waxy, perfect for really getting a nice bold line. I just wanna come through and accent that. This may not necessarily be your thing, but it certainly is mine. I love a nice contrast, so I'm just going to come through and keep working with just the sharpest side of my pencil until it needs sharpened, and then we'll, we'll certainly sharpen it. I'm also going to take an opportunity here to just darken in a little bit more. Just the deepest areas. Just adding that in, I think, can make such a big difference in how things pop. And so, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this. And then I'll meet you guys back here to show you the final result.
Alrighty y'all, so this is how it has come out and I have to say I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to, I'm going to use this like a spray acrylic sealer just so that um, it doesn't get smudged up and if it does get dirty it'll be easier to clean. I'm going to do a couple coats of that. I may actually use some Mod Podge, uh, just spritz it on there. So let's actually do that. I, a wise person would have tested this first. And I think I actually have a marble in here for stirring. Let's see if I can get it. <laughs> well, while I bludgeon this a bit, um, this is, we do have these up for sale on our website. Both the, we actually just have the design of the Luna Moth that you can, um, if you're in our Craft Along Club, a $5 digital download. Good gravy, this thing is. I think I put a mark. Yeah, I did. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> um, there is a digital download file for this where you can just color along with it if you just like the design. Also, the file is in there. I hear you, kitty. Um, and we do have the file for sale uh, for if you have your own laser cutter or a Cricut and want to like make something similar. Um, as well as the kits and then the assembled boxes and then if we're able to we will try to have some finished art pieces up but those are only uh, if we have them available so I do hope that this was helpful to you I can't wait to use this probably in my next tutorial actually um, I'm gonna be using this to hold the beads and stuff in so let's I'm gonna do the first couple sprays into the trash can to make sure that there it goes just to make sure everything's nice and clear. Yeah, I actually like to spray this over my trash can anyhow. And I'm probably going to do a couple of layers. Just let that soak in. Honestly, I'll probably do about five or six layers of that. Or you could use like um, an acrylic, any acrylic spray that you would use to like fix charcoals or something. Um, that's quite pretty and this is a matte finish the links to everything will be down in the video description again if you guys have any questions about anything please hit me up I love helping you guys out if I can and just hearing from y'all and seeing what you make um so yeah thanks again so much y'all and until next time happy crafting Mwah. bye <laughs>